Hi guys, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to show you how to paint a room in a day. I'm going to be painting my lounge here and I'm going to be showing you all of my little tips and tricks in order to get the painting done really quickly and efficiently. I'm going to be painting the ceiling and the walls. Now my first tip before we even get started is to avoid any distractions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to get my mobile phone and to switch it onto aeroplane mode so that I'm not tempted to spend the whole of today checking my social media because you know what it's like, you go over just to check if you've got any messages and then an hour later you're still scrolling. So let's do that first of all. Okay, so my next tip is to make sure that you've got a decent space to be working in. If you've got furniture and clutter in the way, you're not gonna be painting as quickly and efficiently as you can do. So my first thing to do is going to be clear the entire room. If you can't clear everything from your room because you haven't got space in other rooms to move everything into, then I suggest you move everything to one half of the room so at least you can start with a clear space in the other half. Okay, so that's the room clear. Um, hopefully you get an idea of that. Sorry it's noisy, I've had to open the windows. Um, so yeah, so get the room really clear guys. And one other tip that I forgot to mention um, before you even get going is make sure that you've got food in the house, which I've already failed on. Um, I haven't got any milk. So here's the room without anything in it. As you can see, the walls aren't in too much of a bad condition, but there's a lot of marks where paintings and mirrors have been. You can tell where we've been burning candles. It's left a lot of dark patches. Um, yeah, and up in the corner of the ceilings too. Okay guys, the next step is to make sure everywhere is really clean. So I'm just gonna go around with the hoover and get rid of any cobwebs or any dust from all walls. I've got to say, use the uh, brush attachment so you don't scratch anything. Before we start painting the ceiling, the first thing we're gonna do is protect the floor and any bits of furniture that's still in the room. So I've got some plastic sheets, um, some old bed sheets, which are a bit heavier so they don't uh, kick around so much in the tarpaulin. And I've also got some masking tapes so that I can tape around all the edges of the uh, plastic and attach it to the skirting boards. that's the floor protected as you can see I've put down a layer of the plastic and then on top of it I've added the sheet which is just a bit heavier so you're not going to be kicking around the plastic while you're working and it offers a bit more protection to the floor. I've now put the table in the middle of the room I've put a tarpaulin on top of it to protect it and I've got all of my painting equipment on the table this is because I want it to be easy access so wherever I'm going to be in the room I can just turn around and all the things that I need are going to be Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is line my painting tray with tin foil. I always do this because it means that you can quickly just rip the tin foil off when you finish and you've still got a clean painting tray at the end. There we go, it doesn't have to be too neat, just uh, do that. And then, as I say, when you've finished, you just rip the whole lot out, put it in the bin. Right, so this is the um, paint that I'm going to be using on the ceiling. We're starting by painting the ceiling. Let's get that done first. This is Crown Pure Brilliant White Premium Matte. And first thing I'm going to do is give it a really good stir, which is very important. It's gonna make sure that the paint's going on nice and evenly. I've picked up this paint stirrer specifically for the job. These are only 40p and well worth buying a few of these. If you're in a um, hardware store, they've got um, holes all the way down them, which is going to help stir the paint and a flat edge. So you're going to get right down to the bottom and it has a hook on the side here. So you can hook it on the side of the pot as well, which is really handy. Okay, guys, so we're going to start with the ceiling. As you can see, I'm at the other side of the room now. 
and I'm just going to add some paint into the painting tray. We'll be quite generous with it because we are going to be working quite quickly and we want to get a lot of paint onto the ceiling as quickly as we can. And as you can see here, I've got a standard roller, but I've added it onto a broom handle so I don't have to keep going up and down ladders to do the ceiling. So I know you can't see this, but I've now got the painting tray on the floor in front of me, so it's really easy to access. I'm going to get loads of paint onto the roller, and then we're going to start off by getting as much paint as we can onto the ceiling, starting at the furthest corner away from the window, and we're going to work our way back towards the window. Plenty of paint on the roller and go on for a nice even coverage. You'll notice that I'm wearing a cap to um, stop any paint splatters getting in my face. Um, another tip is that you can also use a shower cap uh, just to protect your hair from paint while you're painting your ceiling. As you can see, I've gone all over the ceiling with the roller and all the way around the edges with the paintbrush. As I said before, I haven't worried too much about overlapping a bit because I'm going white and white, so it doesn't really matter too much. And um, unfortunately, some of the ceiling is looking a little bit patchy, so I think what I'm going to have to do is crack on with the walls while the ceiling's drying, but I might need to go back and give the ceiling a second coat. But we've still got plenty of time, it's around about lunchtime. So I just thought I'd explain to you why I think that the ceiling is a little bit patchy. Um, first of all, I want to recommend that you get paint with the highest possible pigment in it. And the second thing I want to say is make sure that you make every stroke count. So what I'm saying is make sure there's enough paint on the roller so you're not putting, spreading it on too thinly. So if you take your time and make sure that there's enough paint on the roller, you won't have to go back and do it again like I'm going to. So next I'm going to be painting the walls using this... Uh, trade paint that I've had mixed up in Farrow and Balls all white. Just show you the colour. It's, um, it's just that one there, which is just going to be a bit of a softer white for the walls. And I'm going to start off by cutting in. So I'm going to put some of the paint. I like to use these takeaway containers they're just really handy to hold and you can just you know get the paint really easily so i'm just going to put some into there Oops. so i've just started to paint around the fireplace and cutting it in all around the edges was becoming a bit of a faff so what i've actually done is unscrewed it it's only held on with two screws guys so if you've got a fireplace definitely check if yours does this as well and i can just ease it away from the wall so I can really easily just paint along there and then fix it back on, not worrying about getting those edges lined up. is one of these painting pads which is just a sponge um, I just find them a lot easier to hold and I find that they put the paint on really nicely and quickly so I want to get a good load onto the pad and I'm just going to try and get as much paint as I can onto the wall and then we can always smooth it off a little bit afterwards then once you've got enough of a coat on just go over any little areas that need a bit of attention with the brush if there's any little loose hairs or any bits, you need to pick them off and deal with them while the paint's still wet. Another little tip for you guys is to always have some wipes handy. I've just got some floor wipes. You could use baby wipes, floor wipes, surface wipes, anything that you can quickly just deal with any little spillages if you drop something on the floor and they're also really handy to wipe your hands with um, in between. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea, guys, of what I've been doing. I've been going around using the painting pad to get as much paint on the wall as possible. And then I've been going over it with a roller with a bit of paint on it, just so that it's not going to be too dry. And this just evens out any streaks that the pad might have left. 
So I've now got a coat of paint on all of the walls and the ceiling, so I'm just going to leave that to dry. As soon as one of the walls is dry, I'm just going to carry on and keep painting. As you can see, I'm losing the light now, which is making it a little bit tricky because it's really hard to see where I've painted already. Um, but I'm going to persevere and keep going to get this done today. I've now given the ceiling a second coat and I've painted all the walls. It's getting quite tricky to see where I've painted already because it's now dark outside. So what I'm going to do is just check it all over tomorrow morning once it's daylight and I'll insert a few pictures of the finished result then as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired some of you to have a go at painting one of your rooms in a day. If you do take on the challenge don't forget to let me know how you get on. All my social media links are below and please subscribe to my channel for more DIY and renovation related videos and I'll see you here again very soon. Bye!